Hi everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to have a closing thoughts on Delta, at least for now, because we're going to discuss a lot more about Delta in Option Greeks, but that is not the scope of discussion for now. We will just be concluding Delta for what is required to complete the Delta hedging approach, and then we'll move forward. Okay, so earlier I defined Delta as the change in value of an option premium. It could be change in the value of a call option or a put option for a given change in share price. For instance, in our example that we actually did on the Excel file, we saw that the delta of a call was 0.7 and the delta of a put was minus 0.3. The interpretation was, if the share price increases by $1, the call option value increases by $0.7. Or if the share price increases by $1, the put option value, the put option premium falls by $0.3. The negative signage, when I mean, when we said that the delta was minus 0.3 for put option, what we indicated was there is an inverse relationship. That negative signage indicates an inverse relationship between the share price and the put premium. So now I'm just refining that definition of delta that we saw. I'm saying now that the delta is not the sensitivity of option premium. It is the sensitivity of your portfolio for change, to changes in share price. Because your portfolio could actually consist of not only just one call option, it could consist of a call option, put option, you could be a writer, you could be holding uh, certain shares in your portfolio, right? So you could have a diversified portfolio, right? So delta in that case is basically the sensitivity of your portfolio to change in share price, okay? So when I say what is the delta of a portfolio, it basically means that when share price changes by $1, how much does your portfolio value change by your call premium in i mean we saw that when delta was 0.7 your call premium changed or increased by 0.7 we have similarly we have to calculate the delta of the portfolio and then we have to uh, conclude you know as to whether it your, your portfolio value changes in an upward direction or in a downward direction right so before i actually go on uh, reading the slides let us actually take an example uh, from the live scenario itself. Okay, so this is a website, uh, Obstra Define Edge, uh, where I'll just show you how to launch it. So all I'm doing is just uh, Googling as Obstra, and then you have uh, the obstra.defineedge.com. You click on that, you have to log in. Okay, I have already logged in, so again, it's not asking me to do anything. And then go to Options, and then go to option chain, all right? Within option chain, you have option chain and then you have option Greeks. Option chain, I will make a separate video at the end after we are done with uh, valuation of options. Okay, so for now I'm ignoring that. Go to option Greeks. I'm just zooming it uh, a bit, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so it says 15 minutes updates only under the free plan. I'm using a free plan. So this data will get refreshed only once in 15 minutes, which is a good thing for me because if the data keeps changing every now and then, I won't be able to explain what I want to explain. Okay, so in that sense, it's actually good. Okay, so this option chain is basically for Nifty, the expiry of which is on the 26th of November, 2020. Just to record it, I am uh, I'm making this video on the 25th of November. So exactly there are two days, 25th and 26th for the expiry. Okay. The spot price of Nifty is 13,085 and the futures price of Nifty is 13,090. Okay. Now I'm going to an at the money option and at the money option is one where the strike price is the same as that of the spot price, right? So the spot price is actually 13,085, right? So I am taking a strike price of 13,100. If you actually see, the website itself has highlighted this in green, claiming this to be at the money, right? And then if you see all the ones above are marked in a certain color for call option. So this particular data is for call option and this right side data is for put option. And this is the strike price, of course. So this mean, I mean, this row basically means that the left side data is for 13,100 call option. The right side data is for 13,100 put option, okay? All the ones above 13,100 on the call option side are marked in a certain color because they're all in the money, right? Because for instance, 13,050 is the strike price. 
your spot price is 13,085, which means it is in the money, right? All the ones below are marked in white because all of them are out of the money. Now, if you think of put option, all the ones below, I mean, all the ones, uh, when I uttered the word below, what I mean is in terms of rows, okay? The strike price is above 13,100, but I'm talking about the rows below 13,100, okay? So all the rows below 13,100, which have strike price of 13,150, 200, etc. They are all in the money put options because the spot price of Nifty is less than the strike price of Nifty, right? Whereas all the, all the rows above 13,100, where the strike price is 13,000, 12,900 and all of them, those put options are actually out of the money because the spot price of Nifty is above the strike price, right? So that's the basis of color coding. These rep refer to in the money call options. These refer to in the money put options, right? The ones which are in white color are basically out of the money call and out of the money put options. Anyway. Okay, so I am now taking, for, for example purposes, I am taking the strike price of 13,100, where the spot price is 13,085, okay? If you actually look at the column delta, it says the delta of Nifty of this particular call option is 48, okay? This should be actually read as 0.48, okay? Because this is for a 100 point change in Nifty. This actually should be read, read as 0.48, okay? The meaning of 0.48 is if, Nifty goes up by one point, okay, if it goes up from 13,085 to 13,086, the call option premium will go up by 0.48, okay. So the last traded price of this call option, of the call option of 13,100 was 62.4, which means that if I want to basically buy this particular call option, I as a holder will have to pay 62.4 to the writer of the call option as premium, right. This premium will keep changing every second based on the changes in share price. And also, we also saw that there are other factors which keep changing, right? The time keeps changing, the volatility keeps changing. So this 62.4 keeps changing based on the changes in uh, share price and all the other factors, right? Delta basically captures how much the premium will change given that there is $1 change in share price, assuming everything else is constant. Okay, so we are when delta is basically calculated on a Cetris Peribus basis, right? So we are assuming that nothing else is changing. Okay, so immediately in the next second, like because even time should not change, right? So I'm just saying next second because one second is a fraction, right? So it's okay. In the next second, if Nifty goes up by one point, then the premium go, will go up by 0.48 uh, rupees holding everything else constant, which we have. We have, we have assumed that the time is almost the same, the volatility and nothing else changes, etc. right? Okay, coming to a put option, the delta of put option is minus 0.52. This minus 52 should be read as minus 0.52. And if you actually notice, we saw that delta of call plus delta of put on an absolute basis should actually be equal to one, right? So if you see this, delta of a call is 45, 48, Delta of a put is minus 52. Uh, if in case you guys want me to just uh, circle it, I will just do that. So the delta of call is uh, my uh, delta of put is basically minus 52, and the delta of call is 48, right? If you do 48 plus 52, it's actually 100, and 100 should be seen as one, right? I mean, because we are di dividing it, uh, dividing both of them by 100 to get a decimal point of 0 0.48 and 0 0.52, right? So 0 0.48 plus 0 0.52 is actually one, okay? Don't ask me what that decimal is, that's rounding off, please ignore that, okay? So if we actually look at, uh, I'll just plot these figures because I wanted to convey another point from this. Okay, I'm um, just moving this off. Okay, I'm just plotting the data that we had in that. Uh... Give me a second.
So the spot price of Nifty was 13,085, 13, right? Okay, the strike price that we took was the uh, was an, uh, was the one which was closest to that of uh, the spot price because we wanted an at the money option. This is as good as an at the money, although you might call it slightly uh, uh, out of the money. I'm talking from a uh, call option point of view, but I think you can consider this as an at the money option. Okay, and if you also see an at the money call option we discussed has a strike has a delta of close to 0.5, right? So if you see the delta of call and the delta of put have uh, a delta which is almost close to 0.5, all right? So the delta of call, uh, sorry. Sorry for that. So delta of call is equal to 0.48. Okay, and the delta of put is equal to minus 0.52. Okay, and just for you to remember, I'm writing delta of call plus delta of put is equal to one. I'm adding a modulus sign over here because we, are we have to take the absolute value of put option, right? Okay, so this, uh, this is modulus, all right? Modulus is basically it converts any negative value into positive value, all right? Anyways, so now let's start off with how will we construct a risk-free portfolio uh, under the delta hedging approach? All right, we saw that we have to write a call and hold delta shares. Okay, so let's say now I'm writing a call and holding delta shares, right? So the risk free portfolio is I write one call option, one call right, okay, and then I hold delta shares, which means 0.48 nifty shares, right? Don't ask me, obviously, nifty is not traded, but you can trade the components of nifty okay so you point for it nifty basically means that you buy 48 percentage of each of the component of nifty all right anyways so this is the way you will actually create a delta neutral portfolio that we saw under the delta hedging approach okay so first scenario is basically what i want to uh, what i wanted to actually convey was let us say you are buying one call option okay so and uh, okay, I'll, I have the data. I will probably remember the data, so just keep track of it. Um, so let's say my portfolio is one call option bought. Okay, I'm denoting that as C plus. Okay, plus indicating I have bought. When I write minus, it means I've sold. Okay, so C plus is call option purchased. Okay, so if I purchase a call option, the the last traded price of call option, if you remember, was 62.4, right? So what happens is I actually pay to the writer 62.4 rupees uh, to get this call option. And then my value of the portfolio today, assuming that the portfolio has only a call option, is actually 62.4, right? So once I pay that money, I have a call option in my portfolio, right? So if somebody asks me what the value of the portfolio is, it is nothing but 62.4, right? So if now let's say the spot price of Nifty, Nifty goes up by 10 points, okay? And this I'm assuming happens in the very next second, okay? Because I have to keep time as constant, right? I'm constrained by that. So that's the reason I'm saying it happens in the next second, all right? Uh, because if I say that Nifty changes by 10 points after one hour, then the time is not the same. So, so my Cetris Paribus assumption fails. So that's the reason I'm saying that this happens in next second. Okay. We know that the delta of call, delta of call, we saw that it was about 0.48, right? So if Nifty increases by 10 points, 
the call option premium approximately increases by 4.8 right because for one point increase in nifty it is 0.48 for 10 points increase in nifty it is 4.8 okay so my call option value should go up by 4.8 all right so the value of call option now is 62.4 plus 4.8 which is equal to 67.2 okay remember this is approximate okay because just like in case you have read bond valuation duration measure, measures an approximate change in bond price for a given rate and uh, for a given change in interest rate similarly delta also measures the approximate change in share uh, change in value of your portfolio for a given change in uh, for a given one dollar change in uh, share price okay so it's just approximate you also have to take like how you take the convexity effect in uh, bond you have to take the gamma effect in options okay but i'm not bringing that we are fine with um, approximate change of 60 67.2 okay so now if now if you actually look at it what is the value of your portfolio the value of your portfolio now is actually 67.2 because you purchased it at 62.4 that has now gone up by 4.8 and it is now 67.2 so what you can do is you can actually sell the call option for 67.2 and make a profit of 4.8 okay although these are european options european options get exercised only on maturity but nobody is preventing you from buying and selling a call option in the market okay you can buy and sell a call option in the market even before the maturity right the call option expires or is you know it can be exercised only on maturity but there's nothing which prevents you from buying and selling it between before maturity right so your value so basically what i was trying to say was your value of call option has gone up by 4.8 and you can book that profit by selling the call option today you don't have to wait up to maturity to actually book this profit all right because up to maturity actually you know this profit is also not certain because god knows what the share price will be god knows what the volatility at that time will be and etc etc right so uh, obviously like you can sell the call option right now and book this profit of 4.8 okay now let's say your portfolio okay this example is done starting with a new example let's say your portfolio actually has c minus meaning you have written a call option so on day 0 which is today what happens is you actually receive a premium of 62.4 from the holder of the call option you are the writer you have received 62.4 from the holder of the call option okay so what exactly is happening here is you receive your uh, receive 62.4 that when you look at your value of the portfolio after you have received 62.4 you have an obligation of 62.4 your value of portfolio is not positive 62.4 it is actually negative 62.4 because you have basically sold a call option wherein you have an obligation to deliver or an obligation to perform uh, an action if the holder exercises it okay so the value of your portfolio in that case is actually Minus sixty two point four, okay. It is not plus sixty two point four because you are the call option writer. Obviously, if you think of it, if the call option holder has a value of plus sixty two point four, you as a writer should have the value uh, should have a value of minus sixty two point four because it has to be a zero sum game, right? What, what the gain for the holder has to be the loss for the writer, right? So your value of the portfolio is actually negative. okay i'm not saying that this negative means a loss i'm just saying that it refers to an obligation that you have to perform okay now let's say nifty goes up by 10 points again okay meaning the call option value will go up by 10 point 8 right okay so if the call option value goes up by 4.8 what is going to happen is the call that was available at 62.4 is now going to become 67.2 right okay so your value of portfolio has further uh, degraded from 62.4 to negative 67.2 okay so the value of a call holder has actually increased to 67.2 the value of the call writer 
has decreased from minus 62.4 to minus 67.2 okay so this 4.8 is actually a loss for you as a call writer okay so if you actually now see the delta of your portfolio the delta of your portfolio is actually minus point uh, minus four minus point four eight the reason i have actually attached this minus is because when nifty goes up by 10 points i agree that call option premium goes up by 4 uh, 4.8 okay when nifty goes up by one point the call option premium goes up by 0.48 right the call options delta is 0.48 it is plus 0.48 because call option and nifty they move in the same direction okay but you have actually entered the call option as a writer and not as a holder okay so when nifty goes up the call premium goes up but the value of your portfolio actually falls your value of portfolio has fallen from negative 62.4 to negative 67.2 right so for you if you actually look at it the delta is actually not positive 0.48 the delta of your portfolio is actually negative 0.48 and that negative is because you have entered that option as a writer okay so when when we actually discussed call option has a delta of 48 and put option has a delta of minus 0.52 or minus 52 we were actually discussing it from the point of view of a holder okay the holder of a call option has a delta of 0.48 the holder of a put option has a delta of negative 0.52 okay but if you become a writer of a call option the call option premium increases when the share price increases but the value of your portfolio is actually going down when the share price increases right so when the share price increases you have entered the option contract as a call writer so the value of your portfolio actually falls okay so there is a negative relationship right when the share price increases the value of your portfolio falls when the share price decreases the value of your portfolio increases so when you enter the uh, contract as a writer you have a negative signage uh, you have a delta in negative signage right i mean from a call option point of view okay so therefore the delta of your portfolio is actually minus 0.48 meaning when nifty goes up by 10 points your portfolio actually is falling by 4.8 rupees which we already saw right i mean your portfolio has fallen from minus 62.4 to minus 67.2 okay so although the delta of call is point uh, for positive 0.48 the delta of your portfolio is negative 0.48 because you have entered the option contract as a writer of a call option okay similarly i'm not taking the example of buying a put option i'm straight away going to an example of selling a put option okay just that i'll just note this point down when you buy a put option, the delta is minus 0.52, indicating when the share price increases by one point, your put option value falls by 0.52. But remember, this minus is from the viewpoint of holder of a put option. Okay, it is not from the viewpoint of writer. Okay, now let's say you are writing a put option okay you receive a premium when you write a put option you receive a premium of 69.25 right sorry give me a second yeah so you receive 69.25 as a uh, premium from the holder of the put option okay so the value of your portfolio it's going to get confusing because now if I write VP over here, it is going to be, okay, I'm just writing put minus and put plus, okay. Fine, forget that. Okay, uh, that is basically a put, okay. So value of your portfolio, oh my God, what is happening? Yeah, okay, the value of your portfolio is actually negative 69.25 because 
you have an um, let's drop this point to five okay it's negative 69 because you have an obligation that obligation is basically as good as a liability for you right it's not an asset anymore right so it is negative 69 okay so let's say now nifty should we actually take the example of falling or increasing okay let's take an example of increasing only increases by 10 points okay we know that when nifty increases by 10 points put premium falls by 5.2 okay this has an inverse relationship and that's that inverse relationship is what is captured by negative over here right okay put option falls by 5.2 which means the option now is going to be uh what 74 sorry it's going to be uh 64 point 64 right i mean if i ignore the 0.2 decimal over here it is going to be 69 minus 5 the put option premium is going to be 64 put premium is equal to 69 minus 5 which is equal to 64 okay so the put option premium has actually fallen by 5 rupees right but if you actually see the value of portfolio now value of portfolio it is minus 64 right if you see the value of your portfolio has actually increased from minus 69 to minus 64 the value of your portfolio has not decreased the value of your portfolio has increased okay so the delta of your portfolio is actually not minus 0.52 it is minus of minus 0.52 which is equal to plus 0.52 okay this minus this additional minus that i inserted over here is because you have entered as a writer of a put option okay the holder of a put option has a delta of minus 0.52 but since you have entered the put option as a writer it is basically minus of minus 0.52 which is plus 0.52 okay if you base what the, the delta of your portfolio when it is 0.52 or plus 0.52 what it basically indicates is when share price goes up by one point one point or one rupee the value of your portfolio goes up by 0.52 rupees and if you see over here that is what has exactly happened the share price has gone up by 10 rupees the value of your portfolio has gone up by 5 rupees it has gone up meaning the value of your portfolio has increased from minus 69 to minus 64 right so although the put premium actually has fallen by 5.2 but that fall in put premium is actually a gain to you because you are a writer right so when put premium falls it is a loss to the holder it is a gain to the writer right so a put option in general has a delta of minus 0.52 but when you enter the po po uh, when you enter the option contract as a writer of a put option the delta of your uh, portfolio is actually not negative 0.52 it is positive 0.52 okay so basically what i wanted to say was if you are a option holder your call op your call option delta is going to be positive your put option delta is going to be negative if you have written a call option then your delta is going to be negative the delta of your portfolio is going to be negative and if you have written a call put if you have written a call option the delta of your portfolio is negative if you have written a put option the delta of your portfolio will be positive reason being the portfolio value when the call option price increases as a writer of a call option you are actually at a loss okay so when the share price goes up the call premium goes up but that increase in call premium is actually a loss to you right so the value of your portfolio falls we saw that the value of portfolio actually had fallen from minus 62 yeah it, it has fallen from minus 62.4 to minus 67.2 right so when the share price increases the value of your portfolio falls which means the sensitivity of your portfolio to share price is not positive it is negative right because it has an inverse relationship so the delta of your portfolio is negative 0.48 in put option case when put when let's say if nifty goes up by one rupee put premium actually falls okay so that is the reason we said that the delta of put is generally negative okay but you have entered the option contract as a writer of an option right so when the put premium falls that's actually a gain to you 
Okay, over here when the put premium has fallen from 69 to 64, that was a gain to you because your portfolio value has fallen from minus 69 to minus 64, right? So your delta of port, the delta of your portfolio is actually going to be plus 0.52 because when Nifty goes up, your portfolio value is increasing. When Nifty goes down, your portfolio value will decrease, right? So you have a direct relationship with Nifty, which is going to be indicated by that positive sign. All right. So this is what I've actually uh, written over here as well. Just quickly taking through uh, the slide as well. So the delta of a call in our example, uh, not the live example, we basically had taken a, uh, an example on the Excel sheet, right? So the delta of the call over there was actually 0.7 if you remember. Okay. But that is from the viewpoint of call option holder. Okay. If you are a call writer, your delta is actually minus 0.7. Because when the share price increases by $1, the call premium actually goes up by $0.7. Okay. And that increase in call premium is actually a loss to you. It destroys your value of portfolio because you are a writer. Okay. So therefore the delta of your call is the delta of your portfolio is actually minus 0.7. Okay. Similarly, the delta for a put holder in our example that we took on the Excel sheet, it was minus 0.3. Okay. Had we written a put option, the delta would have been plus 0.3 because when share price actually goes up by $1, put premium falls, but that fall in put premium is actually a gain to you because you are a writer of a put option, right? So the fall in put premium is going to be beneficial for you because you're writer, because you are a writer. Therefore your portfolio value goes up by 0.3 when put premium actually falls. Okay. Quick summary, one minute, one sentence. Delta of a call for a option holder is positive. Delta of a call for option writer is negative. Delta of a put for option holder is negative. Delta of a put for option writer is positive. Okay. In general, if you ask me, like, let's say there's a multiple choice question. What is the delta of a call? It is positive. Okay. You shouldn't be writing negative because ne that delta of portfolio being negative is for you because you have taken a writer's position. Okay. But when we generally speak, we speak from a holder's viewpoint. Delta of a put for an option. Uh, I mean, if there's a question of what is the delta of put, it is always negative. Okay. Because when share price increases, put premium falls. The delta of an op a put option is negative. Okay. But if you enter as a writer, then the delta of your portfolio becomes positive because you, you benefit out of that fall and put premium. Okay. So I will be ending this video now. We'll have a part three as well for the same lecture two, wherein I will be doing a little more five minute uh, talk about delta. And then we will see the alternatives of constructing a risk-free portfolio. All right. Thank you guys.